So my name is uh, my name is Carlos Carlos Salaberry, originally from Puerto Rico. I've been doing audio all my life, really. It's all I've ever really done. And I started at a young age when I was nine years old. I had a chance of going into a recording studio, and I just remember seeing all the lights and the meters and saying, "This is what I want to do." So that's what I continued doing. A little bit. I had a guitar at a young age, but I'm not. I'm not a guitar player. I can, a few chords here and there, I can strum a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a thing, I, I could always dream of being like a great guitar player, musician or something like that, but always, it was always sound. It was really recording. That's what I really wanted to get into, just because that's what I had done you know, at a young age was just really looking at uh, recording studio. It was, oh, yes, but it was, I knew it was always going to be related to sound. What was coming, I don't know. So I, throughout high school, I played in bands and pretended to do sound. I wasn't very good and, but, and then I, at university, I went to study audio and did recording, specialized in recording. When I graduated from the university, I got a job with Sony Records and I was a talent scout for Sony Records and then worked a lot with artists, selecting music and songs as the artist going to record, going to the recording studio with the artists and stuff. So I did that for a little while. When that changed, when I left that job, I got a job as a recording engineer in Puerto Rico. And I didn't do a whole lot of, I did a lot of cutting tracks, but not a lot of mixing. Did a lot of business development, did a lot of studio maintenance, tape alignment, but I learned a lot about sound and it, yeah, gain structure and all this kind of stuff. After that, I moved to the US, again, from, from Puerto Rico, I went uh, back to the US and uh, started working at a music shop in the audio department. And uh, from the audio department, I started doing installs. So I had many customers that wanted to buy sound systems. I uh, started doing installs for them and designing systems. And then a, uh, a friend of mine approached me to do a big install at a rehearsal facility. And once that rehearsal facility was done and operational, we had Cheap Trick come in. And then with Cheap Trick came in a gentleman named Harry Witz, who I started my audio career with Harry, with DB Sound. And, uh, and it's from him and the people at DB that I, I learned a lot. So that started my touring career. I did my first tour, but before even touring, I did a lot of local shows. There's always a lot to learn. And they made sure that you always learned from the bottom. So learning how to run power and understand power, uh, learning to patch the stage, to troubleshoot. So, and you do that all the time for a while. Then I went on tour with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. I learned to fly PA, uh, which back then was X-Ray PA, Electro Voice X-Ray. And then, uh, yeah, my second tour was the Rolling Stones. I did Europe with them, then came back and Trans-Siberian Orchestra, other tours, Incubus, uh, then other companies, working with other companes, uh, Claire Brothers, 8 Day Sound, uh, Coldplay, Pharrell, Bon Jovi, uh, a, a lot of good tours. And very lucky for that, right? It's not because I'm great, it was, it was very lucky. We're very able to, to work with bands that, that as a kid, I, I really enjoyed growing up, so. My position at Adamson is I'm, I'm the head of education and uh, applications engineering for Asia Pacific. And I think that uh, I think that my experience from touring and my experience from corporate work, uh, I bring a lot to the table as far as system design and understanding of signal flow and uh, experience of being able to troubleshoot. So I understand what you know the end client, is, is doing at a big show. 
And if there's a problem, I know where to go and how to go and how to, how to work with those problems. I hope to bring that experience to the table and to be able to share what I have learned throughout 20, 25 years of doing this with other people. Great. I think that this next step in my career is, is, is a good one. It's being, it's like the, it's like the pinnacle, I think, of being able to take all of the experience of being on the road and doing corporate work and doing music work and doing other types of jobs here and there and putting it all together. And my job is basically teaching, sharing the knowledge and bringing that to other people. So uh, I like it, representing, making your experience, right? The end user, uh, a better experience, right? Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I went to a training before I started with Adamson in Detroit and I took the applied applications and it was, uh, we deployed an E12 system. I had never heard Adamson before, but once we got it up and uh, the Adamson guy tuned it and it was very little, it was just a couple of dips, right? But once we got it up, I was, I was blown away with the highs and I was very blown away with the E119s. And uh, my background is mainly L acoustics. And I think that, uh, I think that Adamson across the board is a sweeter sounding box, more natural. And those, their subs are quite, quite punchy. Another great box that, that I was able to listen to the other day is the CS series with their amplifiers and absolutely incredible. Clean, crisp, powerful, warm, full, rich, For me, there's like certain moments, right? That have been, like you say, wow, I can't believe I'm here. One of them was, uh, was with the Rolling Stones in Germany. We had ACDC and the Pretenders opening up for us. And uh, after setting up, you know, I went out to the audience. There was about 150,000 people. And I went to see ACDC play and the Pretenders play, and I thought to myself, wow, I, like, I can't believe I'm here, that I'm touring with the Stones. You know, it's really a privilege. So that was one experience. Another experience uh, was mixing front of house for Pharrell and NERD, and uh, mixing at um, Glastonbury Music Festival. And there was, I don't know, 100,000, 150,000 people there. And, uh, and it sounded good, sounded, it was a very good mix. It was a very good day. And so that was a highlight. And then also uh, when I worked with Paul McCartney, uh, I was a system tech on that uh, for a few shows. And uh, all of a sudden when he started playing one of the Beatles songs at Soundcheck just with his guitar, it was, you know, your hairs stand up and you say, wow, I can't believe I'm, I'm here with Paul McCartney. So those are highlights and I think those are like the best. As, as a sound guy, when you go see a show, you don't sit back and enjoy the show. You, you become critical. You're always listening, Myself. right? Yes. Ah, how's this mix? How's, how's yeah, the PA yeah, yeah. sound? Uh, I don't, you know, instead of sitting back and enjoy the show, you find things to nitpick. Uh, oh, it sounds great. Oh, it doesn't sound so good. I, I've had a lot of bad experiences mixing, you know? I mean, when you're learning and you're put in certain situations, it, uh, it's not all good, it's hard. Um, yeah, it's not always good. My first time mixing monitors, I had a singer that she was very good, but she sings very softly, very softly. So every time she was saying, bring it up, bring it up. And every time I tried to bring it up, a little bit of feedback and it's like, ah, you, you know? And then also uh, mixing front of house. Hard to get it all sounding tight, no sound check, no nothing. Faders up, let's go. You have to be able to, to get a mix sounding pretty good within the first 30 seconds of a song. At least have something. Sometimes it just doesn't come together. Easier said than done, right? But be calm. Be calm because it's highly stressful, I think, right? Be calm, 
you, you know what you're doing. Just do it and uh, stop and listen. Make changes, stop and listen. Don't be you know, too much. Do something, listen, make change, listen, you know, but calm because it's high energy and there's a lot going on and you feel a lot of pressure. But if you let the pressure get to you, then, you know, it becomes a mess, I think. It did for me. <laughs>
and I loved it. Before coming to Thailand, I'd been to Tokyo, I'd been to Singapore, I'd been to uh, South Korea, to Seoul, South Korea, uh, with other shows that I had done. But my very first trip to Asia was, was Tokyo. I was mixing front of house for a band called Cottonmouth Kings. And we did a couple of festivals, a few shows in, in Tokyo. And that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. But I always loved Asia. So now being here and living here is kind of like a dream come true because I've always wanted to live abroad. I think so. Oh yeah, so far so, far, so good, you know? This, if you love it, go for it, right? This is, is the only way you're gonna know if, is going out and doing it. And I think that it has the potential of becoming a great career. I have been, and it's very rewarding. When you go out and you build up a big system for a show and you tune it and the system sounds great and then you have the show and you see 40,000 people jumping and having fun, you say, wow, this is worth it. It's beautiful. It's like driving a super fighting jet, right? It's like you're at control and, and to make it all come together and sound beautiful is a great experience. And so if you want it, then do it. That's one part of it, right? The other part of it is if you get into touring. I've been very lucky, you know? Audio has given me the world. I've seen the world, I've traveled the world, I've been to many places that otherwise perhaps I, I would never go, right? And so it brought me that opportunity to go out and meet different people, see different cultures, experience different things. Um, and it wouldn't have happened had I not done audio. So if, if you love it, do it. And if you don't, then you could always get out, that's right? Good. But that's okay. fine. <laughs> we'll be around. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now let's have some coffee. Yeah. yeah. Or lunch. <laughs>